had done so repeatedly on the radio. Senator John McCain insisted he could have had no idea that one of the people preceding him to a stage at one of his rallies in Cincinnati on the 26th of February this year would ever possibly refer to the junior senator from Illinois at that McCain rally as Barack Hussein Obama. Tonight, in our third story on the countdown, the McCain campaign has something else racial to deny. The newest comments made today at a pro-war rally outside the Capitol, group calling itself Vets for Freedom, cheering an introduction for Senator McCain given by David Balavia, a former Army staff sergeant. Sergeant Balavia is listed on the group's website as one of its six founders and as part of its national leadership team. Rest assured that men like Senator McCain will be the... the goal and uh, the, the, the men that my two young boys will emulate and admire. You could have your Tiger Woods. We've got Senator McCain. My friends, this is the real audacity of hope. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Senator John McCain. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Dave. Senator McCain then launched into a speech extolling the virtues of the war. He had utterly no reaction to the reference to golf legend Tiger Woods, who is, if you somehow do not know this, of one-quarter Chinese descent, one-quarter Thai descent, one-quarter African-American descent, one-eighth Native American descent, and one-eighth Dutch descent. Joining me now, professor of sociology at Georgetown University and the author of April 4th, 1968, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. Dr. Dyson, a pleasure. Thanks for some of your time tonight. Thank you, Mr. Overman. Those comments by Sergeant Balabia, how would you describe them? Well, I think they're uh, pretty ridiculous. I guess one um, multiracial uh, black man is interchangeable with another. I think that it indicates that the Republicans in uh, broad stroke, and Mr. McCain in particular, uh, have a huge problem with black people. This kind of at least racial insensitivity suggests that uh, there's something disturbing going on here and that they can't even make a distinction about who the right opponent is of Mr. McCain. So I think that it speaks for uh, a broad uh, concern and a kind of uh, legitimate legitimate skepticism about what his candidacy means, especially for black people in this country. When you hear something said like that, uh, is intent impossible to calculate and, and does it even matter? Is the idea behind uh, the remarks the same regardless of the intent? Well, my pastor used to say, look, uh, a mosquito's intent is only to get blood from you, but the consequence could, it could, it could give you malaria. So at that level, the intent will never uh, exhaust the consequence. The consequence here is huge. Now, we can't discern the person's intent. It may have been fine, but that's even more problematic. If there was no specific and particular and conscious intent to do harm, that means that this grows out of a pattern of habit, that it's just a natural reflex, and that one, you know, uh, interchangeable African-American multiracial person is as good as the other, or they're indistinguishable. And I think at that level it's probably pretty problematic. And yeah, the consequence here is much worse than even the one's discernible intent. Since I first heard this today, I have been trying to figure out with some sports background in my, in my <laughs> past, if the veteran there was, was not talking about race, what he could have been talking about. Because what is there to be dismissive about, about Tiger Woods? He's an almost unbeatable golfer. He is, in fact, a man who recalibrated what had been a very non-diverse sport. And because of that recalibration, everybody in it made a lot of more money than they would have otherwise. He brought people a lot of green, never mind any other color. If you're comparing anybody to Tiger Woods on a non-racial basis, the other guy loses, doesn't he? Well, no question. I mean, uh, as, as great a man as Senator John McCain is, when one thinks about the uh, uh, climate and uh, environment that Tiger Wood operates in that he has produced in this country, one could only aspire toward that kind of excellence in one's own field. So it is hard to conclude that anything else was meant but uh, a kind of veiled reference to race, and one doesn't know how veiled, because Tiger Woods is a genius on so many levels. Who wouldn't want to be Tiger Woods? And Tiger Woods himself, ironically enough, uh, has been quite explicit about trying to embrace the multiple ranges of identities that flow through his blood. So it's not as if you have here a person who is explicitly expressing a kind of blackness that one would find offensive. So that's even worse, because here you have in Tiger Woods a kind of man who would ostensibly embrace a wide variety of America, and yet he's being dissed too. Yeah, if you're going to take a sports analogy and they're saying that sports is less consequential than some sort of political or war hero figure, then you'd want to take. Um, but if you wound up taking Tiger Woods as that, it was, it was an extraordinarily lucky shot. But let me ask you one <laughs> last question here. Is there a parallel to that Bill Cunningham episode in Cincinnati that I referenced earlier, especially in terms of uh, McCain's lack of, of immediate reaction? There's still nothing from the campaign about it. Does it constitute a pattern for Senator McCain's campaign? 
Sure, if it's not a pattern, it certainly is constituting a beginning of a design. And I think that uh, here we have to be very careful because I think Senator McCain has to be on top of this. It bespeaks a kind of uh, racial insensitivity uh, at best, and at worst, a kind of uh, deliberate attempt to distance uh, himself from black people. I'm sure that's not the case, not Mr. McCain himself, but the campaign has to be conscious of this. And I think they have to grapple with this in a very serious way. Yeah, and all of it done by just enough of a proxy to seem at arm's length while still getting that... Um, most unfortunate message across. Uh, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, professor of sociology at Georgetown. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my friend. And rare it is when headlines from the Democratic primary campaign become almost an afterthought, but Senator Clinton has picked up one more superdelegate today, an Arkansas land commissioner named Mark Wilcox. And with the Pennsylvania primary now exactly two weeks away, a new poll showing Senator Clinton's lead there shrinking, the latest survey from Quinnipiac University giving her 50 percent to Senator Obama's 44 percent, Clinton's six-point lead down from nine in this poll a week ago, 12 points in the middle of March. The Keith number, the undecideds plus the margin of error, is 8.7% in this poll.